What's up guys, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time seeing one of these videos, we are going to pick a celebrity, in this case, Gordon Ramsay, and go through his entire collection of cars. We've already spoken about Kylie Jenner, we've spoken about Lewis Hamilton, and there's a lot more coming. So if there's anyone you wanna see, please put their name down in the comments, and we always pick the person who comes up the most there. So you will choose directly who the next person will be to be the subject of one of these videos. While we're at it, if you're not yet subscribed, 68% of you watching our videos are not subscribed. So I'm gonna give you three seconds to hit that subscribe button down below. You think they've done it? I don't think so. No? Three more seconds? Yeah, three more. I, I, see, I see you down there. Just a little, little click. Right, anyways, Gordon Ramsay. Let's talk about Gordon Ramsay's cars. So, if you guys don't know who Gordon Ramsay is, you've probably been living under a rock for the last few years. He is arguably the most famous chef in the world currently and has a net worth of over $200 million. Of course, it's very hard to know. He has many, many, many restaurants, books. He's had a few TV shows, so it's hard to calculate exactly what his net worth is. What's for sure is he's done very, very well for himself. Well enough, in fact, to have a pretty cool car collection. Now, pretty elusive as well. It's been quite hard to get photos of certain ones of his cars. Some of them are hugely public. He speaks about them a lot. Other ones uh, are kind of a bit more hidden, and I'm sure there are a few cars that he's got that we don't know of. Now, the cars we know the most of are his cars in the UK, but he obviously spends a lot of his time in LA as well. I'm sure he's got some cars there which we haven't yet seen. We're going to talk from McLaren to Ferrari to VAC Mono to Aston Martin. He has a bunch of different cars, but what's for sure is he has an inkling for Ferrari. He loves Ferraris. He's got some of the rarest ones in the world, but we're going to get to that in a bit. Let's start off with his Aston Martin. Martin DVS Superleggera. We saw this car first when he did a video taking a lot of his cars onto a track day and driving them all around track, which is awesome to see. He's got one of the newest Aston Martins on the road, the DVS Superleggera. This will run you around 250,000 pounds with a good spec. Hugely powerful car, around 700 horsepower, V12 twin turbo is absolutely gorgeous to look at. And Gordon must have picked this one up not too long ago, but there aren't many videos of him driving it around. So he's only really ever used it on the track. Sticking with the English theme, let's then go on to his McLaren. He has a McLaren 675LT, which some purists say is one of the best McLarens ever made. And obviously this has 675 horsepower. It's got the LT name as a throwback towards the history of McLaren uh, and the McLaren F1 long tail. So LT stands for long tail. It's slightly longer at the back, not noticeably so. But it is a hardcore lightened version of the McLaren 650S. Limited to only 500 coupes, 500 spiders. His is in a very particular, really cool kind of gray with orange accent spec. Now the orange is obviously McLaren's color. It's cool to have a little throwback towards McLaren in there. And this is meant to be one of the best track cars. I've actually been lucky enough to drive one myself and I can tell you it's a very, very cool car. V8 twin turbo, like all McLarens. And Gordon actually took this one as well, round track. When that came out, that was running you around a quarter of a million pounds. Now they went up in value afterwards. Now have since come back down and are around 200,000 pounds currently. So we're not sure if Gordon bought it new when it first came out or if you bought it secondhand for a premium, but you'd be counting around another quarter of a million pound car. So we're already at about half a million. Now the next car is going to whack that straight up because this is going to be around the a million pound mark. It's another McLaren, the most hardcore, fastest around the track, the McLaren Senna. There aren't many of these in the world and it is literally a race car for the road. Um, so it's a twin turbo V8 as well, like all other McLarens. We're talking more around 800 horsepower on this one. And Gordon's actually got his in full exposed carbon. Not many are fully exposed carbon. He's also got yellow accents around the car and took this one around track. So if you piece of kind do me a favor and get out of the fucking way. This is my McLaren Senna. Only 500 of these beauties were made. It's like driving the fastest roller coaster you've ever been on. As well. Now this is the ultimate track toy, this car. Very limited. Same thing as the 675 LT kind of went up in value when they first came out and then slowly have been coming back down since. And that's mainly due to the market right now. We believe Gordon actually bought this one and spec'd it from new um, and he did a great job with that and going for the full carbon body is a pretty bold move. But those are his two McLarens and his Aston Martin, his British cars and he keeps all three of them in the UK. And after just three cars, we've already gone up to a total of 1.5 million pounds. While we're talking about track cars, two more cars that go 
Jordan reportedly owns are the BAC Mono and the KTM Expo. Now, these are fully, fully hardcore track cars. Now, the BAC Mono is a single seater. You can't even take anyone with you. It costs around 150,000 pounds with a good spec. And is literally, basically, the equivalent of a Formula 3 car or Formula 2 car that you can drive on the road. It's got an F1 inspired steering wheel, a race derived engine, it is incredibly light and perfect for the track. So we can tell that Gordon really likes his track cars. Now, a kind of similar car to the BAC Mono is the KTM, which he also reportedly owns. Uh, this time a two-seater, but no windscreen, completely exposed to the elements. You can even see the suspension arms through the body of the, of the car. Here's an awesome looking thing, but slightly more road focused, but still a very hardcore track car. So between McLaren Senna, a 605 LT, and those two, Gordon certainly likes his track cars. The KTM is probably around 60,000 pounds, 150 for the BAC Mono. So that's another 210,000 pounds we can add to the till. We're going to take a hairpin turn from the track to the off-road because Gordon's been pictured in a Defender. Now, Land Rover Defender, legendary car. They've actually just come out with a new one, but as an old face Land Rover Defender, Gordon actually has one of the rarest in the world. It's called the Defender Spectre Limited Edition, which came out after it had been seen in the James Bond movie, which came out after it had been seen in a recent James Bond movie. Um, so Gordon's been pictured driving this around. It is, you know, nothing impressive really, particularly under the hood, but looks awesome and is fantastic off-road and great for the English countryside. So yeah, he's got the track cars and then he's got the hardcore off-road car. Not too sure how much these would cost, but the fenders in general are quite expensive, so we're gonna say around 150,000 pounds. Before we talk about the crazy Ferrari collection that Gordon has, let's talk about two very hardcore, very expensive other cars he's got. A Porsche 918, which is finished in blue, non-Visac package car. So the Visac package is a slightly more hardcore package you can add to your car. It costs about 200,000 pounds and you had some extra carbon around the car, some new wheels, and actually ended up bringing the value on the second-hand market of those up quite a bit. Now, the Porsche 918, 918 produced. It's a hybrid hardcore Porsche hypercar with a V8 linked to a hybrid motor. Super, super fast. One of the fastest cars around track as well. Um, obviously, very expensive. We're talking around the million pound mark at the moment, probably 1.2 million. His is in a really rare blue as well, and we can see it that he actually took this car on track, drove it around track. Absolutely fantastic car. Again, not sure whether Gordon bought it on the second-hand market or brand new, but um, I assume he probably bought it new because they were struggling actually when the car came out to sell all of the 918. There are a lot more 918s than the other two hypercars of the hypercar trio, the LaFerrari and the P1. P1 of which there were only just under 400 made and the LaFerrari only just under 500. So yeah, there are as many 918s as both of those other cars combined pretty much. But Gordon managed to get his hands on one. Obviously really, really enjoys the car, drove it around track and that is thought to be kept in the UK as well as it sits on English plates. We can just whack another million pounds on there. Why not? Another one. Now this is very hard. I'm not even sure if we've been able to get our hands on the footage again, but uh, he posted a few stories, Gordon, with a Ford GT. So he has actually taken delivery of a Ford GT. Now we're not too sure on the numbers of how many Ford GTs have now been delivered. Super rare car, obviously a throwback to the Ford GT, which won Le Mans four years on the trot back in the 60s. Awesome, awesome looking. His was finished in silver. It's around a 650,000 pound car once you've put the spec on it. Absolutely stunning. And you needed to be someone with some sort of a presence on social media, which of course Gordon has a massive presence on social media and someone who's going to drive the car regularly. Although we've never really seen him out and about in this car. Now, there's also a contract with these which says you cannot sell them for two years after taking delivery. So presumably it's just sat in his garage and he will take it out at some point, but it's not going to be moving anywhere soon. I think he took delivery of that around about six months ago. But awesome to see the, the kind of collector's car, collector's items he's got between the Senna and between a BAC Mono, between a Ford GT, a 918, and then we haven't even gotten onto the Ferraris yet. Definitely a massive petrol head. He's been on Top Gear several times and he's got a great, great collection of cars. So Ford GT, stunning. Right, now we can talk about the Ferraris and there are a lot of them. I'm actually gonna have to get my phone out so I don't forget, forget any of these. We can rattle off some of the basics, the wrong word, but less limited is probably the right way of putting it. Ferraris that Gordon has. He has a manual gearbox Ferrari uh, 355 GTS, absolutely stunning in yellow. A Ferrari Portofino, which he uses in LA. Very, very cool, perfect cruiser, roof down in the LA sun. Really, really awesome. Perfect car for him to basically daily drive in LA. Ferrari 488 GTB. Now we're not, we think he's probably had a few of those. So a Spider. Um, he probably has a Pista, although we haven't been able to grab any photos or videos of it. We know he's had a 458 Italia. Not sure if he's got that anymore. You can tell he's had a few Ferraris. He's even had a 575 Marinello. Limited to under five. Very limited piece. I believe around 500 were made. I mean, it was a convertible version of the 575. 
five, only 48 or 43. Only just above 40 were made in manual. I'm not sure if his is a, an automatic or a manual. If it's a manual, super, super rare car. That's a real connoisseur's piece, which has gone up. It's around 300,000 pounds now. So having a Super America in your collection is very cool as a Ferrari guy. He's got the elusive, very rare Ferrari F12 TDF. Uh, now this car was limited to just under 800 pieces. V12, naturally aspirated. Awesome, awesome looking thing. Here's this finish in white with a kind of triple stripe down the middle. Gorgeous spec. Actually driven this around quite a bit around London. So there are a few photos of him driving that car. They shot up in value. So originally, so originally Gordon actually got this car new, spec to himself. Probably paid around 350 to 400,000 pounds for it. They shot up to around 800, some even 900,000 pounds and then have now come back down and around half a million pounds on the market now. But awesome, awesome looking car. Great spec that he's got it in. He actually matches one of his other Ferrari, his LaFerrari Aperta. We're going to talk about that in just a second. First of all, let's talk about his Ferrari 812 Superfast, delivered by HRO, a huge dealership network in the UK. This is one of the best spec, if not the best spec, 812 Superfast, I believe. Finishing kind of an army green. It looks really, really cool. It's got little accents all around it. Awesome looking thing. The, the colors of the exterior are continued through the interior. And this was delivered not too long ago. Completely personalized car. One-off spec done by Ferrari. The Ferrari Atelier, they call it. Awesome. I mean, it must have cost an absolute fortune to have a spec like this. I assume this car probably cost around 350,000 uh, pounds, maybe 380,000 pounds with the spec. Could even be more. Who knows? Um, but awesome, awesome car. Very similar to the F12 TDF. It was actually the car which came right after that. Naturally aspirated V12. Something that could be the last naturally, naturally aspirated front engine V12 of that type that Ferrari makes. So potentially a future, future classic, especially in a spec as particular as Gordon. Now, Gordon's obviously got all of these Ferraris. It's kind of the unwritten rule with Ferrari that if you want the super, super special stuff, you need to buy all of the others. So we could assume he's probably got a GTC4 Lusso locked up somewhere. Haven't been able to find any footage of him with one of those yet. Who knows? Maybe we will now and there'll be an image on the screen. Probably got the Pista, as I mentioned. And all of that has led to him having the chance to buy a LaFerrari Coupe. So Gordon actually was offered one of the 499 LaFerrari Coupes when it came out. Spectre himself got it in a gray silver color. Drove it around London uh, and, and has spoken about it on Top Gear and actually uh, mentioned how much he loved the car. Super rare car. It shot up in value costing you know, over a million more than what they originally did when they came out, which was around one and a half million pounds. Now his is in a really, really cool spec. You don't see that many in gray like his. Now obviously it's a hypercar with around 950 horsepower. V12 naturally aspirated linked to a hybrid motor system. Awesome, awesome. It's kind of the creme de la creme as far as Ferraris are concerned. That is if you weren't given the opportunity to then buy the convertible version of that car of which they only made 150 and you had to own the coupe to be invited by Ferrari to buy the Aperta. That's what happened for Gordon and he ended up ordering the Aperta. He went on Top Gear and actually showed the box you get when you get invited to buy one of these uh, LaFerrari Apertas. Super, super rare. They've shot up in value even more than LaFerrari Coupes as you can imagine because they're more rare. Under the skin, it's basically exactly the same. You know, V12 hybrid engine, 950 horsepower. Uh, you can tell them apart because it's got a little stripe. So Gordon's is uh, white. Here are only um, a few choices of colors. I believe white, yellow, black, and red, of course, for Ferrari. He went with the triple layer white, which goes quite well with the gray of his coupe car. Um, and you can tell that it's a, an Aperta, obviously because the roof can come off. And then also because it's got these uh, little stripes, pinstripes down the front hood and a few black accents down the side of the car. Awesome. I mean, very, very, very few people are lucky enough to have a coupe and an Aperta side by side and that's a couple million pounds right there. Buying them brand new, but of course, if he wanted to, Gordon, we don't think he has yet, but he could sell those for a lot more money than what he paid for them. So great investment. Last, but definitely not least, one of his most recent acquisitions is the Ferrari Monza SP2. Now, SP2, because it's a two-seater, it's also available in SP1 as a one-seater, but Gordon took delivery of the two-seater to be able to take a friend along. Now, this is derived uh, off the Ferrari 812, so same engine, naturally aspirated V12, super limited, only around 200 in the world. He got it in a really, really cool looking spec. So black with the red stripe, as you can see, red interior, and posted about this on his social media. Super rare. Again, another car which is around the million pound mark. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I mean, he's basically just picked up all of the most recent Ferrari hypercars. And it's, you know, easy to assume that he will keep buying whatever replaces the LaFerrari, replaces the F12 TDF, so with an 812 GTO or whatever it may be. It's so cool to see him being such a huge uh, car guy, and especially, obviously, a Ferrari guy, and he's got quite 
the collection now. So I figured finishing on the SV2 is probably the best way to do it because that's the most recent car that we've seen him taking delivery on on his social media. So awesome, awesome stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, Gordon Ramsay's got quite the collection. And just to recap, we've got Ferrari Monza SP2, LaFerrari Coupe, LaFerrari Aperta, Ford GT, McLaren Senna, McLaren 675LT, BAC Mono, KTM Expo, DBS Superleggera, F355, 488, Super America, 458. I mean, so many cars. So congrats to you, Gordon. Hope you enjoy all the cars. Hope you get to drive them enough. And uh, hope we'll be seeing you taking delivery of a lot more cars in the future. Don't know why I'm talking straight at him. It's not like he's ever going to see this video. Who knows? Anyways, guys, if you, if you guys enjoyed this, remember to comment down below the next celebrity you'd like us to cover. They're really fun doing these videos. And of course, I'm sure sometimes there are some of their cars that we have not yet seen or that, you know, they've not yet shown on social media. So we may be able to even do updates on the people we've already done. So comment down below uh, what your thoughts are for future videos of this type. Anyways, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, it really helps us out. And I'll be seeing you again very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.